All right, what is going on, guys? Welcome to uh, the, my derivation assessment for physics class. Uh, today, we're going to be doing the derivations for charge of uh, RC, uh, uh, RC, and or what it was it? Actually, just RC for this video, and then the next video. Yeah, this is going to be this is going to be the first part of an anthology series about the different types of circuit being uh resistor we're starting with resistor resistor capacitor we're going into uh inductor resistor and then we're going to uh finish off with inductor capacitor today at least for this video i'm going to be going over charging the capacitor with respect to both charge and current so what does that mean well we're starting with a full circuit our circuit, our source of voltage, our resistor, and our capacitor. So, what do we need to know in order to get this done? Well, first it starts with the exact nature of what it is that we're doing. Well, let's think about it. So, what, what does our equation need to have, right, in order to figure out the function of Q with respect to time? Well, we have to think of what our, what our uh, constant is, right? What's our Q initial? Our Q initial is actually just going to be Z rho. Because we're charging the capacitor right now, not discharging it. Meaning to say there's nothing in it to begin with. So we're going to end at their maximum Q. What is our maximum Q? Well, if you recall, if capacitance is equal to Q over V, then that means, rearranging the equation, Q is equal to C times V. Oh, wait. That means that Q max is just equal to that. All right, so now we have to find what fraction of Q max we are consuming every time that we, um, what's it called? Oh, excuse me. What fraction of Q we are consuming uh, every time that uh, uh, whatever slice of, of time passes, right? So first we start with our voltage equation. Right? We're going to start with Kirchhoff's law of loops that dictates that the sum of the voltage needs to be zero. So we're going to start with X voltage, we're going to go all the way around, we're going to lose X amount of voltage, and we're going to end with zero. So, what does that mean for us? Well, that means that the voltage of this needs to equal the voltage of this and this at the same time. So, that means that the voltage of the battery minus the voltage of the resistor, which is dictated by V equals IR, so we have I there's our R. Subtract again the voltage of a capacitor, which is going to be Q over C. And that all is going to be equal to zero. But we're trying to solve for charge as a function of time. So this I over here is actually not going to be very useful to us. What we can do is we can replace that I because if I, if the function of Q with respect to time, or actually I should say that I is equal to, oh, sorry, the rate of change of Q, it asked Q over time, Then we can say that current is the, oh, no, it's not Q over time. 
It's Q times time. <laughs> My fault. Which means that we could say that I wait, is it Q? Hmm. No. It's this way, I think. Yeah. Because current is the rate of change of Q. Which means that you could write I as the Q DT. Yeah, right? Yeah. I think so. I guess how that works. Right? Because if I is like the amount of charges moving in a given space of time, that means it's basically voltage, right? Because, uh, not voltage, velocity. Because velocity is the rate of distance, of how many distances you cover in a given amount of time. And I is how many charges you throw in a given amount of time. So yeah, this is the relationship. Which means that Q over T is definitely equal to I. And that means every slice of I or D I is going to be equal to DQ DT. Oh, there we go. Oh, my neck. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> anyway, after that uh, little strange tangent, we can replace I with DQ DT. So now we have DQ DT times R minus Q over C taking all of that and subtracting it from voltage should equal zero not even in an ideal world in the real world as well because that is just the rules of nature it's a good song by the way should definitely give it a listen all right, so now we have to rearrange this equation to get this on this side and then everything else on the other side. So this is going to be equal to voltage minus Q over C. What we just did there is we took this Brody and we kept it on this side. And then we move this guy on the other side by subtracting everything by voltage. And then we subtracted everything by negative Q over C. Then we flip the signs because we turned this guy from negative to positive. And so since we subtracted the voltage, negative voltage would be on this side. But since we multiply it by negative one, it becomes positive. And this guy keeps his sign because we, we added him and then subtracted him afterwards. So now we have this. But what can we do with this? Hey, that's a really good question. Oh, oh, geez. Okay, well, if we want to get Q by itself, right, we're going to need to get rid of this C underneath, which means we're going to have to multiply everything by C. Okay, so that, and then we get DQ DT times RC. Oh my gosh. What? Oh, what? 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 That's really interesting. And then you set it equal to VC. Hey. Wait a minute. What does that... What does that sound like? Let's see here, okay, so if C is equal to Q or V, then if we multiply C by V, what, do, what does that become? Oh my gosh! What? What? Oh my god, what? Oh, that's crazy! Okay, anyway, so now we subtract whatever our arbitrary Q value is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, that's where that went. Because then it, you just move this back up here. Okay, my fault. There, we we'll keep that. Okay. So now we have this thing right here, this wonderful piece of work. Now, let's get this DT out of here, shall we? Okay, so we know we just, actually we'll just copy this just so that we can stay consistent. Whoop. Ow. 
Now we just and then we put that guy inside of a couple of parentheses. And now we have this um, odd looking function. Oh, is this the right side? Oh. Okay. Nah, this is not far enough. We want DQ by itself. Give me this. Take this. Optimum pride. And we just divide this John by our C. And now we have our full Brody. Alright, word. Now what? Well, there's something fun we can do with this whole thing. Uh, actually, you know, just for the sake of simplicity later on down the line, I'm going to multiply everything by negative one. So we're just going to uh, kind of extend this a little bit. Put this here. Put this there. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so now we have this whole thing. Let's derive, right? So now we have... <coughs> The negative derivative. Wait a minute. Something's not right. Oh, we gotta switch these. My fault. Here, hold on. Wait, we gotta move this over here because this isn't gonna work unless it goes this way. Because we need to have all of the derivatives. We have to have all the Q's on one side and all of the not Q's on the other side. And like I mentioned before. This is just, CV is just another way of referring to Q, so he gets to stay. He gets to pass. He's alright. He's, he's cool with us. He's rocking with us. We can, we can, we can let him, uh, we can let him slide. Just for now. Right? So now we have to derive this with respect to Q, and then this whole thing with respect to time. Let me just put this on top here. <sighs> okay, so now we derive both of these, uh, derive, integrate both of these things. So this one with respect to time, this one with respect to Q. That, oh, there's, that's where that went. That's where that's supposed to go. My fault, there you go. Okay, well, this one's actually gonna be pretty simple because since we're just integrating with respect to time and there's no time variable already in this thing, pretty much everything that isn't that DT is just gonna be a constant in the next form. So that's just gonna turn into one over um, C, R goes there multiplied by time but remember we made this negative so it's going to be negative m <clears throat> word okay so now set that equal to the derivative of this um <clears throat> man oh geez this ah this is this is really something huh Oh, how are we ever going to get rid of it? Well, now we just use U substitution. Okay. So if U... What are we going to set U equal to, though? Um... Uh, man. I think we'll just set it equal to... Mm -hmm. I don't want to set it equal to negative Q. Like, in a perfect world we'd be able to set it to positive q if only i had set something up so that we didn't have to do that oh my gosh what is that is that a negative sign oh my gosh does that mean we get to switch the order of these things oh my gosh oh you're too kind to me i can't believe you would do something like that for me yes i would i did okay so now our thing is going to be q minus v c Whoa. All right, now what? Well, um, we can just find du and set it equal to dq. Uh, well, I can't do that yet. But um, actually, yeah, we can. Oh my god, we can. Because if you know, q goes to dq by deriving it, and we derive this function, the VC disappears because VC is only equivalent to Q in like that way. It is only equivalent to Q in terms of Q max, right? It's not equal to like Q as like as a whole, right? It's only equal to Q at a very specific point. Whereas Q is just Q, right? So 
again, it's a voltage. It, it's a it's a constant rather than a a proper variable like uh, like the regular Q represents. So when you derive it, du is just pretty much equal to dq, which is pretty crazy. Or I guess, like, if you wanted to be cute, you could say du over dq, right, is equal to 1, and then rearrange it to get that, but again, that's, you're just getting what I got before, so there's really no point. <sighs> okay, so negative rc times time, oh, well, forgot, you can't forget the clothes, you gotta add the, the constant over there, just if you, just cause, you know, you wanna be annoying. Uh, and so now you have du over u, the integral of that. Oh my gosh, what does that look like? Well, it's just going to be ln of u, which will be equal to this stuff right here. All right, word. Now what? Um, and also, the ln from where to where is another good question. Which I forgot to answer a little, a little while ago. Well, let's think back here. Okay, where are we starting at? We're starting at zero. And we're going to Q max. So. Our starting point will be zero. And our ending point will be Q max. Alright, now let's do the thing. Or I guess instead of Q max, we'll just say Q. Because Q max is equal to something else. Alright, ln of, okay, let's look here, 1 over Q minus CV. Alright, set that equal. Wait a minute. Because 1 over Q minus CV, and then we have to subtract the value at 0, which is going to be ln of CV, right? Even worse than that, it's going to be negative CV. We still have to set that equal to this. And I forgot the constant again. Man, I'm not on my game today. Okay. Now we have this. And now we can uh, use the power of, you know, a funny little rule about uh, uh, the, these types of... Oh, wait, no. We said you just that. Oh, I'm overcomplicating it. How wonderful. It's just this. How, 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 how nice is that? I can't believe I thought of myself that far ahead. Okay, so now when you subtract an ln, what actually is funny about what happens is that you can just do a little something like this, right? You just take this guy, you move it up. Wait, we gotta move these two further to the side, this one up. Uh, you put that one, and then you just Okay, right, oh my gosh, what's going on? Come on, I'm building right now. It's like Fortnite, Battle Royale. I got my mats, I have to, you know. Start cranking 90s. Um, yeah, so what happens is you can actually just plop this down on top of that, and it basically means the same thing, right? That's just because of the nature of what it is, you know, because they're exponents, right? Because e to the power of ln of whatever is going to be equal to, you know, no. How does it work? No. Oh, yeah, no, because e to the power of ln of whatever is going to be whatever, right? So essentially here what you've got is you've got an exponent minus an exponent, right? Which is going to be equal to whatever over whatever. Because when you subtract an exponent, you divide. So we have whatever number one over here, and then we have whatever number two down below. And finally, we get to set this garbage equal to this right here. Now, the reason why we don't have a C in this one is because it's essentially going to be this plus C minus this plus C. And so the C's would cancel each other and we wouldn't have to deal with them, which is really nice for us. Okay, on to the next part. 
What do we do now? Well, like I mentioned before, this right here is just uh, an exponent. So now we have to exponentiate it. So it's e to the power of whatever, which pretty much just breaks it out of the shell. Then we set that equal to this, which is actually now going to be e to the power of that. All right, word. And now we have to multiply every. Get this parenthesis out of here. Now we have to multiply everything by CV. So we're just going to take this. Actually, we're going to take this whole thing. We're going to copy it down here. And pretty much all we got to do is erase this line that I worked so hard to make and multiply this guy by negative CV. Okay. Well, now that we have that, we have to add CV. So now we have to take this one more time and start filtering it a little bit more. And now we have to add CV. So this negative becomes a, we're actually just gonna make it part of the equal sign. And now we have our Q function. Okay, respect to time. We can go a little deeper with this though, because now we can extract a CV from each of these. So it becomes CV, and now we put this in parentheses, times one, minus E to the power of negative T. over RC. What's the constant though? Ah, uh, gee, I don't know. I, I really, and I, yeah. I, wait a minute, it's when you exponentiate it, but I'm glad I don't I mean, let's just assume the constant is zero because I really, I really don't. Yeah, I really don't care. Yeah, I, I really don't. I don't like constants. Constants are dumb. What happens when he just brought to the power of a constant? Because I know that constant needs to disappear. But why does it disappear? to it. Why does it disappear? Hold on, I'm thinking now. Because if Q times C if Q minus CV is equal to CV and then that's essentially equal to e to the power of c multiplied by that again. Okay, right. And so what, what happens to Brody? So then we can just treat this as like its own constant, right? Because it's e to the power of a constant, which would just be a constant again. Uh, so if we put it at time zero, then the value of this guy needs to be zero. So it's going to be negative. Hold on. I'm just trying to figure this out for myself, just so that I can understand why I need to cancel this. Okay, so if negative CV is equal to... Negative CV... Uh, 
times e to the power of this. Oh, which we would then need to multiply by EC. Okay, here, hold on, I gotta move this. Times e to the power of C, which is a constant. Okay, so at time Z row, that's not the right color. At time Z row, what do we need to happen? We need this to be zero. So e to the power of zero is just going to be one. So it's negative CV times EC needs to be equal to negative C. Oh, and so C is zero. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, that, 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 that takes care of that. And now that we've gone on that little tangent, uh, there, there's your function for, uh, for this little guy. Um, now, regarding discharging the capacitor, well, that's actually not going to be as hard as one may think. Um, it's pretty much just the same idea, right, uh, of this, except it's going to have the same uh, rate of change. It's just going to be little different so let's think here right for this whole thing we had to operate under the assumption that we're starting with zero charge and we're going to q max right but for this one we're starting with q max and we're ending at zero charge so for this whole thing we figured out for charging now let's do this charging okay so let's rearrange this thing really quickly um we have this whole thing which we just did the derivation for right and so now we have one minus e to the negative blah 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 and so let's take a look at the nature of, of this function here so as e times t goes towards infinity what happens? Well, e to the inf to the negative infinity approaches zero because uh, e to the negative graph looks pretty much like this, right? So you start with a, a, a huge number, and then you re get really, really close to zero as that huge negative number gets closer and closer and closer and closer, right? So essentially, what you end with is going to be C, V, that's not the right color. I imagine those are swapped, times one, right? Or times like 0.9997 or whatever, right? So if we want the opposite of that, if we want our Brody to approach zero, all we have to do is take away this one. And also take away this negative because one minus this would would look pretty much like you know, starting from zero and going to here right and then it maxes out around cv and now the brody is starting at vc right is starting at vc and then going down towards zero with the same rate of change because like we solved over here. These guys are always going to be equal to this, right? The fundamental difference is going to be that now we no longer have voltage anymore because since we're not charging, what well, here, hold on. Now I can see, now like, it was gonna be quick and easy, but now I have to like explain all of this. So here, look. Okay. So the fundamental difference between this and the other thing, and why we're not we're no longer taking the the one plus or one minus, is because the voltage sum should be equal to zero, right? And so since we're at Q max and voltage, hold on, let's look here. Volt. Voltage is equal to Q over C, right? 
So the voltage max is equal to Q over C, right? And so now that we no longer are starting with zero Q over C, right? Which essentially is just V minus IR. We can't do that anymore because now we actually do have a Q. So now we are at Q max over C, disconnected from the voltage because we're discharging now minus IR is equal to zero. And so we do the same exact derivation this whole way through just without the voltage. So it becomes that, and then we multiply by that. And then it, it essentially all just boils down to the fundamental difference of no longer having that one minus anymore. Because it's going, it would, because what it would have been is it would have been right one minus uh, c times v. But since we no longer had that initial v, because it's going to be voltage times whatever, oh, because it's going to be voltage times that, we don't have that anymore. So it's just going to be this guy right here, all by itself, sad and alone. All right, that, that, I think that does it for uh, discharge. Um, discharge and charge at the same time. Next, we have to do current, which is just going to be a bushel of fun. <laughs>